Welcome back to part three of getting the old Sporty 40 back on the road. Now that we got some gold right over there, well, we need to make some woe on this front end. You might recall on uh, the first video of this old car, I talked briefly about uh, what I wanted to do with the brakes. I found a kit that uses 70 to 77 Camaro rotors and calipers and all that. Well, that's the route I'm going, but they're on drugs and they want like $750 to, you know, for the conversion kit. Well, right here in this box is everything I need from Rockato. Guess how much it costs? $250, yes, sir. The only thing I'm missing is two caliper brackets and two uh, adaptors to be able to use the wheel bearings from the Camaro, and that's it. And I'm all for people making a profit, don't get me wrong, but that's it's a little excessive. So anyway, what I got to do is make caliper brackets, and I got to make my adapters to use those bearings. Tell you what first, let's, uh, let's dig into these boxes, see what all I got, make sure I got everything I ordered yesterday. And then uh, we'll pull this wheel off and go to looking at all that. Oh yeah, this is really heavy. Oh yeah, this is heavy. Ooh all right, there's the first box. Let me get a knife. I tell you what, <laughs> I got this thing all kind of taped up. What is the devil? My goodness. This is the adult size bubble wrap. Listen, this would be a triple shot. That might have been four. Now, let us see what we got. We got our little magnets like we always get. Tell you what, I'll start putting them up here. I got some brake pads. I got two dust caps. And I'm gonna assume these are rotors. And I would be right. Yes, sir. All right, let me get that other box. I'm just making sure we got everything we need. Here's the second box. Inner wheel bearings. These feel like the seal. I didn't. I couldn't remember if I got these, so I'm glad I did. These are the outer wheel bearings. Of course, our magnet. So we've got cheer. Um, the reason those aren't in the box is because I needed that box for something. This should be calipers, and I don't know what else. I think I forgot to get brake hoses, so when the time comes, I'll have to go to Ireland probably to get them. More adult bubble wrap. Yes, sir, that's all this is. It's going to be the calipers. That's pretty. That's so pretty. Got the little clipper clipper there for the brake pad. Oh yeah. All right, let's get over here. Take this wheel and drum and all that stuff off and go to measuring and figuring. Well, I had to go steal the socket off the motor. Remember how I was using it for a spacer on the alternator? Well, I need it on these lug nuts. These don't really fit, I think. Well, I really don't know why, but they just, they didn't fit real good. And the studs weren't long enough. That's why they weren't very tight. All right, let's get this um, drumalumma off. Get off of there. Well, that sucker's on there. Here. I didn't realize he did that. All right then.
That is literally <laughs> a piece of wire stuck in there. <laughs> it's so weird. That's something like I'd do. I remember, you know, dude has got 76 Camaro brakes, calipers, and rotors and all that. Daddy put them on. I can remember uh, he didn't make a spacer like this or an adapter, whatever you call it. He pulled the spindles off the truck, put them in the lathe, and cut the spindle down to match the Camaro bearings. He did have to make a little, I don't know what you call it, spacer back here on the back uh, to space the bearings out and uh, something for the seal, that inner seal to ride on. We're not going to do that. We're going to do this right here. We're going to make us an ADAP door for the bearings. What the devil? <laughs> oh, here's the brake lines. Yeah, okay. <laughs> there ain't nothing on them. All right, I got my inner bearing right here. And as you can see, this is just a wee bit too big. What we've got here, the ID on this bearing is inch and one quarter. Well, let's see what the spindle here is. It is approximately an inch and one eighty-seven. That's three sixteenths. That leaves sixty thousandths of space. That means thirty thousand per side of our little adapter here. That's well, that's pretty thin. Let me tell you, that is approximately. Right there. See in between them jaws? That's, yes sir. That's awful thin. Um, I'm just wondering if they're using a different bearing in that kit with a bigger ID. I tell you what, let me go do a little research because that, that's going to leave that adapter really, really thin. I'm, I'm afraid to even try that. Let me go do a little research on bearings real quick. Actually, before I go, uh, Let's see if this inner bearing is gonna work. Oh yeah, that works just fine and dandily. So we're good there. Let me go see about this here because I'd like to have one with a bigger um, ID. Well, upon further research, they do not make a bearing with this OD and an inch and 3 16th ID. I didn't think they would. Bearings are, they're kind of weird in their sizes. Um, so we're gonna have to make our little ADAP door. Um, what I gotta do first is get all this stuff here out of the way. Then we gotta go do some measuring and figuring. Let me tell you this, fellas, we're in the um, fabrication stages now of this car. <laughs> I am not a fabricator, no sir. I'm very slow. It takes me forever to make up my mind how I'm gonna do something. So this is this gonna be a slow process. Anyway, let me get all this stuff out of the way. All right, what in the devil kind of old crap is this? <laughs> what in the world? I ain't never seen no such as this. How does this even come apart? All right, I don't know. Well, it don't go all the way through, so I'm assuming it's got to turn a certain, there we go. Oh, yeah. I mean, you got to push it in and then pull her out. By the way, I'm not throwing these parts away. No, sir. Y'all know me. Never know when you might need them again. I think the way it looks, undo this hose and then do undo these four bolts. This whole assembly may come off. Yes, sir, let me try that real quick. Alrighty, I have got my measurements for my little adapter. Let me show you how I come up with it. Here's the rotor on the spindle. 
I got the nut on it, you know, and the cotter pin. That's got to stay there because of this. I don't want to have to be moving that around. So this has got to stay the same. So what you do is you come back here and you see, well, there's the bearing way in there. And then there's your back of your spindle. Well, see, you can do that right there. We can't have that. That's what that adapter is going to, well, partly what the adapter is going to do is take all of that out. Um, this, well, let me, let me get this up on the table and I'll show you how I came to uh, my measurements that I got to use. This is what I did. I set, this is the old hub. And then uh, here's my new rotor assembly. Set them up here on the table. And you want to measure from the outside of the outer bearing to the outside of the inner bearing. You want to measure the thickness of that bearing stack. Same thing over here. And what I got was basically an inch difference. Well, I done made me a drawing. So here is this area right here. This, this, all the way. That's my adaptor right there. And I know that's gotta be an inch because of what I just measured here. And then we know that um, the spindle is an inch and 187. So that's the ID of it here, well, all the way through. And then we know the new bearing is an inch and a quarter. So that's what the OD of this has gotta be. And then this three quarter length here, well, this is like 650 or so. I just decided to go with 750 because it's a good round measurement. And then the seal, which is right cheer, it goes right cheer. I measured it, and it's like an inch and nine fifty. And it seemed like I remember seeing two inches when you look this seal up. So that's what we're going to go here is two inches. So that seal has something to write on. Um, that's pretty much it right there. So let's go over to Mama's. Pretty sure I'm not going to have any steel this diameter. Two inch, well, it needs to be a little bit more. Um, we'll look and see if I don't. Well, then uh, I gotta go to the metal store. Well, I'm over at Mama's at the lathe and my scrap, it's, it's dwindling. I'm gonna have to go start buying some. But I do have some two inch. There's a piece there. Here's a piece there. If you remember, my seal surface has got to be two inches. Well, watch this right here. It wobbles pretty good. By the time I get that wobble out, it's liable to be too small for that seal. So I'm gonna run to the steel store, see if they got some two and an eighth, two and a quarter. And uh, that's that's what we'll use. All right, I just got back from getting the metal. And I got to thinking, I need this spindle over there whilst I'm machining, so I can make it fit this pretty tight. Maybe even a very slight press fit. So I'm gonna attempt to get this kingpin off so I can have this spindle with me. Um, not sure if I'm going to be successful because <laughs> that kingpin, it's probably been in there for many, many years. I'm going to try to knock it out of there. Let's see what happens. Got to get one on the bottom too. Oh, I'm too old for this. Oh, yeah. All right. Now I got a bolt right here. It's like a I don't know what you call it, but it holds the kingpin in place. We've got to get it out. Locking pin, I guess that's what you call it. Is that the right size? No, sir. Take my hammer. She's in there, buddy. out there or not. It's been in there a long, long time. No, sir. Actually, it's coming out, but I, yeah, I do believe there's a little cap right there. All right, there's the cap I was talking about. The bottom one come out too. I do think it's moving though. Oh yeah. That's coming out a lot easier than I thought it would. Well, 
Well, I done got that stuck, so that's good. <laughs> there we go. We're almost there, but this ain't long enough. Um, let me try to grab it with chanty locks. Oh yeah, there she comes. Ta-da! It's got shim, so let's make sure that we see where they are. They put it back just like it was. Two skinny ones on top. All right, let's go. Uh, let's go do some machining. Well, it is the next day, and I'll just go ahead and tell you, <laughs> I wasted half the day yesterday. Sure did. As you can see, I've almost got the little bearing adapter done. I like just maybe 10 or 12 thousandths on the ID here. Um, and that's when I realized this ain't going to work. <laughs> Remember me telling you that this area here was going to be real thin and I was afraid it wouldn't work. You know, it's 30 thousandths thick right there. And uh, I was hoping to make it a press fit and, you know, that'll back this and make it a little stronger. Well, I got to looking at spindle and... From here back is machined. It's got an itty bitty shoulder that drops off. And then as you can see, this is not machined. Well, this is only about an inch from here to here. And that'll cover this area. That'll leave this area just hanging out here, 30,000 stick. And I guarantee you, as soon as I put a bearing on here and put the weight on it, it'll either break this off from here or it will at least severely deform it. And it ain't gonna work. Um, yeah, I was, <laughs> I was pretty disgusted yesterday. Um, well, I went home, did a little studying, and I come across the instructions to this kit that I'm uh, copying. I got to reading through the instructions, and, well, uh, remember me telling you yesterday that they probably use a different bearing? Well, that's exactly what they do. Here it is right here. Just went and got it from Ireland. It is uh, com comes off a of 71 through 80 Pinto or Mustang 2. The ID, well, let's go back over here. This machine surface right here is an inch and 187. And the bearing that we were going to use out of the Camaro rotor was an inch and 250. And, you know, that left that right there 30,000 thick. This bearing is an inch and 377. That's 190,000 difference, which will leave 95,000 wall here that's much better than 30 thousandths i believe that'll work well i'm pretty sure it will you know because they sell the kit so what i gotta do unchuck this pitch it in the trash and start over basically let me tell you this too um they also make a 3 16th spacer after you get the rotor on there's a 3 3 16th spacer on this end here the only reason i can thank for that is well, maybe a couple reasons. One is, you know, this is only an inch right here. Well, they're trying to move it that way to give that thin area just a little bit of support back here. And two, where the wheel mounts on this rotor, it's about a half inch further out than the original. And they may be trying to move that back in and get to track with a little closer to stock. It's the only thing I can think of. So that's what I'm gonna do also. I'm gonna make that 3 16 spacer. I really wish I'd have found those instructions two weeks ago when I started planning this. But anyway, let me get this piece off here, get it chucked up, and we'll go to machining. All right, here's what we're going to do firstly. I'm going to face this off, get it trued up. Then yesterday, this this chatter, those of you that are machinists, you know, it ain't sticking out that far. And it shouldn't chatter, but it did chatter bad. So I ended up having to center drill it and put a lap center on it. So, I'm just going to go ahead and do that after I face it off. Then we'll get this uh, major OD, which has got to be two inches. And then we'll just keep on trucking from there. Alright, we are at about 
16 or so thousands more to go. I'm going to take about five and I'm going to slow the feed speed down and give it a better finish. cleanup cut or what daddy called a spring cut um you know say like you're taking 25 thousands off you do that four or five times well it may only take off 23 thousands each time and that two thousands will build up and uh, you just make a pass without touching your dial here to clean it up that's what that's what the spring cut is or cleanup cut is let me do that real quick Approximately two, two and a half. I'm gonna polish it a little bit on this end because that's where the seal's gonna run. I think we'll call it good. Alright, let's see what we got. We're at two inches and one by thousand. I think we'll call that good. Alright, now what I got to do is do this step down this is where the bearing is going to sit and it's three quarters of one inch long so we'll make me a mark right here then what you do I got a backstop over here um, what that is is it makes this carriage stop at the same place every time so I'm gonna roll this around line it up pretty close right there then I will loosen this backstop. Bring it towards the apron here. And then tighten it up and then run it up to it tight. And there I'll have my backstop. Now we'll stop at the same place every time. So let me get to cutting on this. It's got to be an inch and 377. Approximately 413. We got to go to 377, 87, 97, 07. Um, 36,000. I'm going to take about 25 and slow the feed down. What do we have? Uh, 390. So well, that's um, 80, 13 thousandths? Yes, sir. I believe I will go 10 and then we may polish that last two or three. That is showing dead on. Hmm. That took a little much. Uh, let me back this away and get the bearing over here and see what it feels like. Does it fit? I believe it's really close. Um, I think if I polish it a little bit, it's a little bit warm too. So if I let it 
cool off. I'm going to polish it and let it cool off. I bet you we'll have it. All right, it's cooled off. Let's see if it'll fit. Oh yeah, pretty good. Yeah, that'll work right there. I gotta run my cutter back in here and face this here off. Then we'll get our drill bits out and go to boring that. All right, let's get to drilling this thing out. I gotta go all the way through it. This here drill bit ain't quite long enough. I gotta chuck it up right on the end. Starting out with quarter inch. And we'll probably go to three eighths after this. Let's we'll switch to a 3-8 now. Ta-da! Went all the way through that time. Alright, let me switch to a half inch drill bit. three quarters this time. One more time with a one inch. I got an inch three sixteenths, which is what it needs to be. But I guarantee you, if I use it, it'll overboard and well, that's start all over. And I ain't doing that. Um, let me get this cleaned up a little and get my boring bar set up. And I'll be back. I already got the boring bar set up. And I don't have a lot of luck with boring bars. They're usually not rigid enough. You can see how skinny this is. But my next biggest one, these are all homemade, by the way. Next biggest one's too big gonna fit in here, so I got to use this one. Well, it, it'll flex a lot. So you, I have to take really small cuts, like 20 thousandths or smaller, and feed really, really slow. Uh, we're at an inch and 15 thousandths. That's hot, by the way. <laughs> we're at an inch and 15 thousandths. Gotta go to an inch and 377. No, no, that ain't right. No, no, no. Inch and 187. Um, that's gonna take a while, 20 thousandths a swipe, plus feed real slow. Um, I'll be back when we get close to the, the actual size. Well, it is a few hours later. No, I'm not joking with you. No, sir. <laughs> I have cut and sanded and cut and sanded on this inside. And I don't want to take it too far, so I'm having to go slow. But that's as far as I can get it to go on right now. Um, I think what I'm going to do, go ahead and part it off and get this to length. And then I just... I just have to keep sanding because this is the end it's got to come from anyway. Um, yep, that's the only thing I'm going to do. Let me cut that off. Well, here is something that I hate even more. 
than a board bar that's cut off too. This lathe is wore out. It's got so much slop that, well, I can pick the, the saddle up right here. I can pick it up now. And it's really bad for this cut off tool. It chatters and hangs up. and Well, it's just generally a pain. <laughs> so you're going to get a kick out of this probably. Already chattering. See how much slop this has in it? See that? Yes, sir. It's wore out. Wore out. cut off and <laughs> made all kind of racket in the process I'm gonna chuck it back up that's hot Ooh, it's very hot was that probably Ooh, I'm gonna chuck this up the other way and go to facing it off until I get it I believe it's got to be 13 sixteenths yes sir. so let me do that and then I'll be back and we'll we'll work on that ID some more We'll get it to fit eventually, I reckon. All right, let's see how this fits from the other end. Oh, it's even tighter. <laughs> you aggravating sucker. I gotta do some more sanding. It's gonna take a while. I've spent, I bet, three hours on this inside. It's ridiculous. Does it fit now? No, sir. <laughs> you aggravating son of a gun. I'll tell you what, I might, it might would be a press fit. Let me pull this back out real quick. What I gotta do now is, this spindle has a little radius on this inside corner. Well, I'm gonna have to do something here. Probably just put a chamfer, I don't have no way to do a radius. Uh, unless I do it by hand, and I ain't doing that. So let me cut me a chamfer here to fit that, and then we'll take take this out of here and see if it'll press fit on. All right, I sanded it one more time, and uh, let's see if it'll fit on. Uh, if we drive this on and it gets stuck about halfway, well, we may be in trouble. <laughs> Oh, look at that. It went right on. That is awesome. All right. Uh, let's get over here and put it on, put it together. Let's just see what it looks like. All right. Let's put this together. I know we still need the spacer, but I'm impatient. I want to see this thing together. Oh, yeah. Slide that in there just like that right there. Get my bearing. Put it in there. Here's my washer. Now the spacer would go on now. Then you put this washer on. Then you put the nut on. So there's going to be slop because it, it needs that uh, spacer. But the art is right there. Yeah, see, it's got a little bit of slop in it. That nut's about as tight as it's going to get. So we got to make a spacer, but. By George, look at there. That's pretty doggone awesome. Yes. All right. Let me get over here and make a spacer real quick. All right, let's put this spacer on and see what happens. I can tell you right now, my cotter pin hole it ain't going to line up. That, that spacer's too thick. Yes, sir. Pretty sure, pretty sure. Yep, it's right here. Barely see the top of it. <laughs> um, everything else is okay though. There's no, no slop in the bearing. So I either can thin this washer down. I can take some off the back of our, our uh, bearing adapter. Or the easiest thing to do would be just find a washer, probably half that thickness. 
Let me see if I can find one real quick. I found me two whooshers. I'm trying to bore them out to three quarter of an inch. Hopefully I can do that and then I think they'll work for the spacers just fine and dandy. Ta-da! Alright, let me do the other one. Alright, here's my whoosher right here. Let's see if that's going to work or not. The only thing I need to happen is this slot line up with the cutter pin hole. I believe it's going to do it. Let's see. You got all the slop out of the barrack. I got a pin right here or a piece of wire. Oh yeah, look at there. That's perfect. Let me tighten her up just one click. Got right there. Oh yeah. That's like a brand spankingly new one. So, if you're going to copy this kit, you don't need a thick uh, spacer if you make the bearing adapter the width I did. All you need is that little whoosher. Yes, sir. That's awesome right there. Now, I got one more to make. And, uh, well, this took probably seven hours, if not longer. Yes, sir. Most of it was due to the, the ID trying to get it. I'm going to have to speed that up because that's just way too long. Won't get it all done tonight, but I'm going to go over and start on it. I'm hoping to get at least all the OD stuff done and maybe start on the ID. But anyway, um, I'll finish it up tomorrow, and that's when I'll see y'all when uh, we're back at the shop ready to put all this back on. Well, why won't you come out of there? Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, here's the second one right here. And as you can see, I already got all the OD stuff done. I got it turned down for the uh, seal right here. I got it fitted for the bear ink right here. I got her bored out to one inch on the inside. And this only took me about an hour and 15 minutes. Um, you know, I'm fixing to have to start using the boring bar, and that takes forever. Here's why. Uh, if you remember, I told you I could only take 20 thousandths per pass. And I had to put it in the slowest uh, feed speed because that boring bar flexes. And it just won't cut if you're trying to hog it out. And it took two or three hours, you know, get from one inch to 177. That's what I got to go to. Uh, well, look at here, what I found. I found an inch and 964 drill bit. Oh, yeah. That is an inch and 141. So if I bore this out with that drill bit, that leaves me with 36 thousandths that I got to use on the boring bar. That is going to speed things up tremendously, let me tell you. Uh, this is awesome. <laughs> I'm really happy because I really wasn't looking forward to using that boring bar again. Anyway, let me get this in here. We'll bore this out and then I'm going to go to the house because I've been at this nine or ten hours and my back is killing me from standing on this concrete. Let me get this done. Jammer in there, boys. Jammer in there. Well, I just put the calipers here on the inside, and it is at an inch and 145. Uh, that leaves us with 30, 32 thousandths. Uh, that took about three minutes to do, and <laughs> it took probably three or four hours off this whole operation. That is just, that's awesome. Anyway, I'm going to clean this floor up because the little kitty cats, I don't want them to get metal in their little feet. Once I do that, I'm going to the house, and tomorrow, hopefully we'll finish this in a couple of hours. And then we'll get this stuff put on the car, and then we get to working on the caliper brackets. Well, it is the next day again, and I just started boring this center part out with the boring bar here. And there's a good example of what I'm talking about, this boring bar flexing. Uh, that first cut was supposed to be a 20 thousandths cut, and it took exactly 4 thousandths off. That's, <laughs> that's how much flex that's got in it. And that's why it takes so long to get this center part done because, well, I just don't have the right tools, right equipment. As usual, using what I got, you know, that's my motto. It's, maybe I get this done in a couple hours and we'll get over there to the car and uh, we'll get all the stuff put on. Well, I stepped outside just a minute to get some fresh air and look who was sitting there waiting on me. Oh, Miss Daisy. <laughs> How you doing, girl? Say hello, everybody. 
All right, we'll see you later. Well, I've made four or five passes through here. I remember me telling you the first one was supposed to be 20 thousandths and it only took about four. Uh, well, I moved the dial 10 thousandths that next time and it took 13. <laughs> that's the flex in this thing. That spring cut I told you about last night, this thing flexing, that's what that is. Well, um, I got it to about 170. We need to be at 177, 178. Got it to 170. I took a cut, took a pass without moving my dial here, and it went to 175. And, you know, that's within two or three thousandths. Well, I took another pass, didn't move the dial here, and we got to 177. That's where we're at now. I'm going to make one more pass. I ain't going to touch the dial. Hopefully, that'll clean it up just enough where that spindle will slip up in there. Fingers crossed, anyway. Well, it took several more passes because big dummy me... <laughs> Finally realized that I needed to go to 187 instead of 177. Yes, sir. Um, anyway, watch this right here. Oh, yeah. Slips right on there. Um, let me get it parted. Get it cut to size. Get my chamfer on the inside there. And I'll see y'all at the shop. All right, let's see if we can't get this here spindle back on this car. Let me tell you all this real quick. Um, I know the audio has been terrible on the videos since we uh, moved into shop because it has a lot of echo. And especially like right now, i got the doors closed. It's even worse. Um, I got a microphone coming. It's supposed to be in here this morning. I was going to try it out right now. Well, it didn't show up. It's called a shotgun mic. It mounts right above the camera there. And it's supposed to pick up just in front of it. It'll drown out side noise and rear noise. Uh, hopefully, it'll kill the echo and you won't be able to hear this fan running over here. But I got to have a fan blowing on me. <laughs> it's gonna be hot. Uh, anyway, as soon as it gets here, we'll try it out. Hopefully it'll get rid of the echo, make the audio better. If it don't, well, I'll try another one. I'm trying to avoid having a mic that you pin on your shirt. I just, I just don't care nothing about that. But if I have to, I will. Anyway, as soon as it gets here, we'll try it out. Hopefully things will sound a lot better. Now let's get this here spindle back on this car. I thought about flipping this spindle over that's how it goes if you flip it over like that well it'll raise the spindle which will lower the car probably i don't know an inch and a half maybe two inches maybe more but it's angled this this line here and that line there are not 90 degrees it's angled it throw my caster out my camber out and they ain't no telling what else so we're going to put it back like it goes and then then we'll study on how to lower it. But right now I'm just worried about getting these here brakes better than they were. I probably ought to lube that up. Let me do that. All right, I got me some greases. Let's, let's grease this thing up a little bit. All right, let's put this little feller together. Just look at right there. Where's my bearing? I've lost my bearing. Here it is. I found it. I found it. That's a little thrust bearing. I guess it's got, it looks like ball bearings in there. Anyway, it goes good just like it right there. Then, this is not going to be fun. I'm going to tell you that right now because that just barely fits. I still got to get these two shims in here. Come on. There she goes. All right, let me get my punch. Get under here. I wonder if that groove is lined up on the right side too. Oh yeah. I can't believe it, but it's lined up dang near perfect. Let's see if it'll go in. Look at there. That was too easy. I got some snapping rings I gotta get in the top and the bottom. Off oh, yeah. Like a glove. Now I reckon it's time to 
put our spindle stuff on. I'll have to get them, uh, them little, whatever you call them. It's sort of like freeze plug. I'll have to get some of them for the top and bottom. Anyway, let's get this stuff here on. Also, I know by the way, you know, the first one of them I made, we had to sort of drive it on. Well, after I drove it on, <laughs> it just fell off. So it's not a press fit, but it is, it is a pretty tight fit. I'm not greasing any of the bearings yet either. I just want to get this on here, see how it fits. And we still got to make caliper brackets too. Thin, AKA piece of wire. <laughs> there it is, fellas. We got one rotor installed. Ain't no slop in the bearings. That's pretty awesome right there. Tell you what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go over yonder and take that side apart and uh, get the rotor on over there too. That is pretty doggone awesome. We now have rotors on the front of the old sporty. Well, I know this was not my most exciting video, but machine work, especially when it's all manual machine work, it, it takes a while, it's pretty boring. Uh, hopefully though, next week, we'll have all the brakes done, maybe. I don't know, you'll just have to wait and see. Anyway, appreciate y'all watching, hope you enjoyed it. If you don't mind, hit that like, comment, subscribe, share it with your friends. And until next time, go do something. Blur, blur.